Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to talk about the USS Missouri and audiology. Coming right up. So I want to give you a little background upon why I'm talking about something kind of different called the USS Missouri. I am a World War II buff. I've written two books about it. Both are fiction. The very first book I wrote was called The Violin Secret, which is a Holocaust book. And the second book was just more recently, it's called Shadows of a Man. You can get it at drscottyoung.com. I'm not trying to get you to buy my books, that's not my focus here. But what I want you to understand is why I got into this. Now, I'm a very young baby boomer, okay, of, of the ages when you look at that. My mom is a traditional generation person. So my dad and my mom were very young when World War II happened. Now, somehow my mom told, has told me about this, that her parents really didn't like her studying about World War II. So she did anyway. And the, I got into that. I had that bug inside of me really deep. And I watched anything. We read about anything all the way through in this process. Now, I want to share with you a patient that came into my office. This is just one of many patients. So this guy comes into my office. He's around five foot five, and he's a very unassuming kind of gentleman. And what he did is one, he's in the history books in my, in my situation. This guy lands in the early stages of June 6, 1944. He's in Omaha beaches. Now in the Omaha beaches, there were these, these walls that would scale up very high and he had to scale up these walls. When he gets to the precipice, he starts firing on the enemy and a little bit into that time frame, he gets wounded and he backed out to England. Now, uh, we have a unique idea that was starting to happen a little bit later, about a couple months later, where they wanted to drop into, it was called Market Garden. So in the north, northern part of, of Europe. And they dropped in and they were trying to <coughs> make a difference in, in uh, cutting off Antwerp and a few other kind of ports that they were looking at. And it was ultimately a failure, but not because of what they were trying to do. He lost his leg and he was telling me the story. I'm just looking, I'm like, holy cow, I can't believe you went gone through that. It's just one of numbers of patients over the years. Now, I had a chance to go to uh, Hawaii, and I'm in Pearl Harbor, and the first thing, obviously, you gotta see is the USS Arizona. But one of its sister type ships is a little bit different, it's a, it's a little bit of an update, is the USS Missouri. Now, obviously, it can't be on the Arizona because it was sunk in during Pearl Harbor on <coughs> December 7th, 1941. Now I have a, a few things that will slides that you can kind of watch as you go through here. But let's talk a little bit about the USS Missouri. It's called BB-63 or the Mighty Mo. It has 11 battle stars. That means um, battles that it was within. So it would be through World War II, the latter part of World War II, it finishes in Okinawa. It goes into Korea in the same basic makeup. So that'd be 50 to 50. <coughs> excuse me, 53. It was mothballed and then brought out with millions of dollars and they put on Tomahawk missiles in the first Gulf War. So in around 89 through 90, you know, we, we have this, the Gulf War that occurs. And they have these Tomahawk missiles. And I remember seeing it when I was in grad school, watching the Tomahawk missiles probably going off when I would watch this on CNN, they're going off from the Missouri. It has a special place in my heart. What I want to share with you is some of the armaments that are upon it. There are nine 16 inch guns. Let me tell you how powerful they are. They have 195 decibels of impact noise. What that means is that when they would shoot off a gun, it could do, leave a depression that could be dozens of meters down in the water. You can see it if you go look on, on YouTube. So have this huge depression. And the impact noise, they could just fire off one after another. 
and we're talking about 195 decibels. That could go as far as 20 miles with armor piercing rounds that are 2,700 pounds. We have four inch guns that were above the 50 calibers and some of the five inch guns. So we're, what these are going off is, is taking off any of the um, kamikazes that were a lot much later in the war. And then the 50 calibers are trying to deal with, with the guys that would, would come down and come on the deck. So for instance, when I was walking around the boat, I mean, I went everywhere and I kept opening up doors and it wasn't even really part of the tour. I just wanted to be away from everyone. And somehow I got to a private tour and they were <coughs> ask, someone was asking this question and they were asking the question, why would they have the 50 calibers? Why were they off in the same on the port and starboard? And, and I jumped in and I said, well, here's the reality. The Japanese zeros specifically for, for Pearl Harbor had created a fin on, on their uh, torpedoes and that fin could go in, uh, in the low waters of Pearl Harbor. And what they would do is come down right on the deck and they would come down in a horizontal mode and they would sh come shooting in their 50 cal ahead of them. So you had a 50 caliber that was shooting at that Japanese zero. And, and it happened all the way through the war. I want you to think about how loud even a 50 cal is going on. If, let's say you are my uh, reloader and I'm shooting this off, we could be shooting off together six weeks of every single day, hundreds and hundreds of rounds. See, any battle that was happening all the way through the island hopping would happen six weeks on and maybe a couple weeks off, and six weeks on and a couple weeks off. These are uh, amazing people, and I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of these patients. Now, you have to ask this question, why in the world am I talking about all of this stuff and telling you about some of my passions? It's because my passion lays within these people who are at the youngest, maybe 89 years old in 2020 right now. But they come home from World War II with a unique illness that is hard to understand whether they were in tanks or whether they were a, a Navy man, a sailor who was on that, on that boat, whether he's, he's on a, a, any kind of ship, whether it's a destroyer or a battleship like, <coughs> excuse me, the Missouri, or whether he's on any other kind of thing. He's got so much sound going on around him and popping off the guns many times. So here's what you don't understand. Optometry is a relatively old profession. It's a sister profession for audiology. But audiology didn't exist until World War II. So what they had is psychiatry. So abnormal psych would have patients who would come in and, and those people would actually deal with the hearing loss. And there were other people that were kind of messing around with hearing aids at the time. And they were very old style in how that worked. And the fathers of our field started to develop a process through the VAs, and then it became a private practice and a research kind of circumstance to develop an idea for World War II. Now, years ago, <coughs> I remember this very clearly, I had a front office person who didn't know anything about World War II, and I would, I'd mess with her all the time. I'd, and I remember it was December 7th, and this patient comes in and he's, he's talking to me and he, you know, he and I know each other and, and we're talking. I said, do you know what today is? And she was like, well, I don't know, it's Thursday. And I said, it's December 7th, a date which will live in infamy. The empires of Japan. And I start rattling this off and he's laughing and, and she's looking at me like I don't get it. Here's the thing. We have audiologists who don't understand our field. The X, the Y uh, generation, and some of the baby boomers have not studied our his history. We owe our lives to these people who created our field by their injury. And I, I owe them a great debt of gratitude for that. 
As many as 70 million people died in World War II. 350,000 of them were from the American arena. And hundreds of thousands more came back with those injuries. These are very unassuming men when you talk to them. See, they're 17, 18, maybe 25 or 30 years old, but really you're gonna have a lot of younger men. They had no clue what impact that they would do. And as we think about audiology, they, it took us into a new realm because of the modern warfare that occurred and how much loud sound affected them. Some of them would just use roll up cotton and shove it down in their ears, but it did no effect. A roll up cotton ball would maybe do six decibels of reduction. Well, if you had 195, 175 uh, decibel sound going on around you, and think about this, it could be a complex sound. You see those nine inch or the 16 inch guns could go right over top of you and you're on the 50 cal with me, let's say, and that gun's going off over the top of me and I'm doing the 50 cal right here. Holy cow, how much hearing damage that would happen. And so I just want to share with you how powerful this field is, how amazing and how much gratitude that we have for the greatest generation. So if you like some of this stuff, subscribe, check us out. Thank you so much.